call will be monitored and recorded for customer assistance, collection, or complaint procedures, or to block future calls, dial 1-8. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? How's everything? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. God is good all the time. How's your day going so far? Uh, it's all right. I just got some plans from space. Okay. All right. So um, I want to thank you for coming to my show. Okay. And, and um, you know what it's all about. It's about you getting to tell your side of the story that people don't know that they only hear the negative parts like in the newspaper. They don't know what really happened, your version of your story. Right. Right. So can you uh, tell everybody what your name is, please? My name is Miranda Caitlin Gray. Okay, my, hi, um, where are you from exactly? Um, I was born in Washington State, but I'm from Fayetteville. Okay, that's North Carolina. North Carolina. Correct? Yes, okay. Yes. So how was life growing up as, as a young girl in North Carolina? It was crazy, honestly, but it was cool. It was fun. So what did you, you grew up with? Uh, you got a bunch of siblings in your family? Um, I got, yeah, I got like six brothers and sisters, three and three. Okay, so you got a big family. Yeah. Uh, are you guys close? Um, um, sort of, kind of. My mom died, and after my mom died, everybody sort of kind of like separated. Yeah, that's how it happened uh, most of the time. So how was life growing up with you coming up as a young girl? Um, it was hard, I could say, but it was cool, I guess. So what did you do um, coming up? Well, you, you, you playing sports, the school you went to, stuff like that? Um, I went to Pine Forest High School. I went to a couple of um, – I wasn't really into sports like that. I was more of a book reader. Okay, so you're more you're more into the books. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm a you, had, you had any hobbies, or anything like that? Um, not really. I'm pretty much a boring person, besides like my life after I grew up a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So, at what age did you start um getting into like trouble? Um, probably around 18, 19. Okay, so what we doing? What, after I graduated what, high school. Okay, after you graduated high high school. So what happened after that when you graduated? Um, well, my mom died, and I started prostituting, and it went from there. Okay, you started prostituting. Because when I was younger, when I yeah, when I was younger, my mom sold me for drugs, and basically after she sold me for drugs, a lot of crazy stuff happened, and I basically found out about the life, and so I decided to fuck that. I got a pimp, and just everything went crazy. So you said your mother sold you for drugs. How did that happen? Yeah. Um, it was just crazy. I was young at the time. I was probably like 13, 14, and yeah. Wow. She told me something about that. Yeah, okay. Wow. I still love her, though. Right. So did the drug dealer rape you, or, or you gave it to you, you? How did it happen? Um, he didn't rape me. I mean, I had to just give it to him, I guess, you could say. Like, it started with just him coming into my room, and it, what happened, happened. Wow. So that's, not, that's a terrible experience. So how did you feel when that first happened to you as a kid? Like, shit. I tried to talk to my mom about it, and she was oblivious to it. She didn't want to talk about it. She was just like, he's not doing that, and this crazy shit. And I was just like, wow, okay. So he's leaving your room to come to my room. No wonder what he's doing. So he was having sex with you and your mom. I don't know if he was having sex with my mom, but. Okay, was your mom on drugs? 
Yeah. Okay. So she needed the drug, so she gave up her daughter, pretty much. Pretty much. All right. So, so you said after that, you you got into a prostitution. What happened? Well, um, after my mom died, I met a pimp or whatever, and I just started traveling. I went up to Virginia, I went to New York, and I had a couple of things out there. And then I went to California, I met my baby father. I got pregnant, and then I came to North Carolina after I got pregnant because me and my baby father got into a fight. And so after me and him got into a fight, um, when I got back to North Carolina, I couldn't get a job or anything, and so I started prostituting again after I had my daughter, and I met a pimp out here, and basically, he kidnapped some people and beat them up, and since I was in the room, now I got to go to the beds over it. So you say he kidnapped some people and beat them up? Yeah, like, they could stole some money from him, so they, he kept them in the room. Like we was in a hotel room, and he brought them to the hotel room and started beating them up and just crazy shit. Oh, wow. And, and were, were you standing right there, or were you outside? I was in the room. And you didn't know he was going to do that? No. And where is he now? Is he locked up? Yeah, he's locked up. His baby mother is the one, because he had me search the girls, and so that's how I became involved in it. And so now because I had to search the girls, now I got charged with first-degree kidnapping, conspiracy kidnapping. It, it was a whole list of stuff, and the feds dropped it to conspiracy and, um, what else was it, in aiding and abetting kidnapping of a minor. Wow. Um... I'm still going to court. Yeah, I'm still going to court for it. I don't know how long I'm going to get for it, but I'm still going to court for it. Oh, so you didn't get sentenced yet? No, not for that. So how long have you been incarcerated so far? Uh, since 2019. Okay, okay. So you're still fighting the case. Are you going to trial? Or, um, or, or you going to trial? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm not going to trial because I feel, I feel like there's no need because at the end of the day, I did search the girls. He made me search the girls, so I'm going to have to, like, atone for my problems. I did search them, even though there was, like, it was either me getting my ass whooped or me searching them, and I chose to search them, so. How many girls were there? Shit. It was a couple, at least like four or five. So why did he make him go to the room? What happened to cause that? I know, they were, okay, he's a drug dealer also, and they were bagging up his drugs. But well, they were bagging up his drugs. Yeah, those girls, he had brought them in her boyfriend. And did they steal anything like that? He, yeah, they stole some money. And then he just went off. He was like, I can't believe you guys did this to me. Because I guess he expected them to steal drugs, not money. Wow. So is, is your boyfriend, is he a black dude or a white dude? I don't have a boyfriend. I mean, sorry, but who's the guy? Who, who's the guy? Was he black or white guy? Oh, the pimp? Yeah, the pimp. Yeah, he was black. Was a black pimp? Okay. So yeah. how did how did you guys get arrested? Did you get arrested separately? Did you get arrested together? How did it happen? Uh, we got we got arrested separately. He got arrested first, and then he had his baby mama tell me, and well, that's what I read in my discovery at least. His baby mother, like a, two days after he got arrested, his baby mother talked to an undercover, and she told them about me. Okay, and then they came and got you at home. 
Yeah, they came and got me at one of my friend's house. Did he offer you a bail? Because he got arrested in my... Huh? Um, they offered me to go to a rehab, and when I went to a rehab, that's how I got in trouble with the state, is I went to the rehab, and I was on drugs, too, so when I went to the rehab, I got back on drugs, and I was drinking liquor, and I ended up running around the rehab, but I naked, so they charged me indecent liberties and decent exposure, and they made me sign up as a sex offender because there was underage women there, because it was like a battered home for shelter, like, how do I explain it, like, uh, uh, we have for battered women and um, trafficked women or whatever, so they sent me there, and I ran around the place, but I asked Nikki because I was on the BNX and I was drinking liquor, and I got charged with indecent liberties and sexual battery, and I had to sign up as a sex offender, and since I didn't sign up as a sex offender, because I feel like I'm not a sex offender, they decided to send me to prison. Oh, wow. So you had a chance to go to the rehab yeah. and get around the case, and you messed it up pretty much. Yep, pretty much, exactly. So how much time are you trying to give you? Because I've never been in trouble before in my life. Oh, you never um, for the Fed, for, for the state, for the state, I, have, I only have to do until Jan or December, actually. I have to do. I have to finish here. But for the feds, they're talking about 17 years, but my lawyer was like, she's trying to get it lowered because it's human trafficking, drugs, kidnapping, a lot of bullshit. 17 years for that. Wow. So, question. If you would have went to the drug program, you wouldn't have got 17 years, correct? Um, honestly, I don't know, because that was just something to get me out of prison, I guess. I don't know. I was hoping. Oh, wow. Because I was still, I still had to go to court, even though I was in the drug program. Uh-huh. All right, so, um, so are you, I guess that's your co-defendant, um, the pimp guy, right? Yeah. How much time are you trying to give him? I have no clue, honestly. Oh, you don't talk to him at all? Yeah, no. I don't talk to him at all. I got you, I got you. So how did your family feel about um, you being locked up? They're devastated because, like, my stepfather, he's just like, he doesn't know what to do. I have a little girl. She's in California with her father now because of all of this. Um, basically, that's just about it. My brothers and sisters, I don't really like putting my burdens on them. You know what I mean? Like, this is my problem, not theirs. For so the girls that you uh, y'all kidnapped, I guess they're going to testify against you, huh? Oh, yeah, probably if I go to trial. Okay. Did any of them get hurt? Um, he beat up one of the girls, yeah. Oh, wow. Did he, did he, did he use the weapon or he just beat him up with the hand? Both. Oh, wow. Okay. So I guess you guys got, um, he's your co-defendant, but y'all don't have the same charge, do you? Um, no, he has more charges than me. Okay. So they didn't offer him no drug program, correct? Because he was, I've, I only, I, I've only known him. You have 60 seconds remaining. After Thanksgiving, and he got locked. I met him like two days after Thanksgiving, or two days before Thanksgiving, and he got locked up in January, like, 17th, and then I got locked up February 19th. So can you, can you call me back so we can we can finish? I don't talking? see him for a couple months. Can you call me right back so we can yeah, finish? Yeah, call me back. All right, call me back. Thank you. Yeah, I'll call you back right. Now. Anson Correctional Center. This call will be monitored and recorded for customer assistance. Thank you for using Global Tail Link. Hello. Hey. How you doing? Okay. So let's finish where you were left off at. 
Okay. So what were you saying um, the, uh, from when you got the phone? Oh, basically I only knew him for a couple of months. And how did you guys meet? And then he got arrested. Um, through a mutual friend of mine. Through one of my homegirls, she introduced me to him. Okay. Um, did you feel you needed a pimp, or you, or can you, could you have done it by yourself? Well, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't need, I, I didn't need a pimp because I was already doing it on my own. And but the thing is that my house was constantly. Like, like, I think it was Matthew that had just came through, and I lived right there by the Cape Fear River, and my trailer was just all fucked up. And he was like, instead of saying, here, you can just send your daughter with your nana, and you can come stay with me in a hotel. And I was like, well, that's true, because he was offered to pay for the hotel for a week or so. And I was like, you know what, all right, I'll go with you. And that's how it went. And then he just, it started off as me paying for drugs, and then it went to him starting to pay me. But I needed the drugs more. What kind of drugs were you using? Um, I was using crack and cocaine at first, and then when I got with him, I started using heroin. Right, so you went from crack and cocaine to heroin. And, yeah. um, so you've been locked up for like two years now. Yeah, off and on. Oh, oh, off and on? Yeah, because when I went to, when I first originally got locked up, they let me out to go to that rehab. And then I fucked up and they locked me up again. Okay. So you think you got another shot at the rehab or that's it? Um, they might. I think the feds might do it. I don't know yet. Um, me and my lawyer, we're trying to get something to, to do. But is it a probation? I, I just hope they do something for me. I don't know what they're going to do, honestly. So why do they? Why is it a federal crime? I don't get it. Um, because it was in a hotel room. I guess mm -hmm. I don't know, and because I guess the feds were looking into him already. Like I, I have, I was only with him for a little bit, and I'm only in this situation is because I got with him and I was in that room. So I, I barely, I knew him, but I barely knew him. I was just on. To be honest, I was only with him for the drugs. Okay. So there's strong possibility the feds was already watching them, and then so when they came, they, they, they made it a federal crime. Yeah. Yeah, so that doesn't sound like a federal crime to me. Um, I mean, kidnapping, but kidnapping is not always federal. So. Right. So when the next time you go to court? Uh, um, August 3rd. August 3rd, and what are you going for, um, to take a plea or to just, you know, to try to negotiate No, it's going to be, it's going to be my sentencing hearing, and hopefully that's when they tell me how long I got. Because with the feds, it's kind of different from the state. They don't, like, their pleas, it doesn't mean anything. Because I took a plea already and said that I was guilty, but it, they didn't give me a time. The judge has to give me the time of how long I'm going to be sentenced for. Okay, so um, are you in a federal holding jail? No, I'm in Raleigh. or No, not in Raleigh, but I'm in Anson right now. In oh, Colton, right North Carolina. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you go to court soon, and you, you find out how much time, what, what's going on, stuff like that. How, how do you like your lawyer? She's pretty cool. She's all right. She's trying to help me. She's um, she's looking into my background and stuff, trying to build a story for to present the judge. So. Everything can go smooth, and he can see my side. Because right now, all they're seeing is a woman who forcefully sucks up women and held people for her pimps to beat up, basically. Right, and that's why it was important for you to come on my show, so you could tell your side of the story of what really happened. Because they're not—they're not, they're not going to.
put this type of information out there. All they want to do is paint the worst picture they can about you. Right. Because when I got locked up, my bond was like a million and seventy five thousand dollars. I had people coming to me talking about you beat up people with a baseball bat and all this other stuff and I'm like, I didn't do any of that. What are you guys talking about? Like, it was just crazy how they are picturing me. Yep. You see, but now now you got a voice. Now you getting a chance to tell your side of the story and what really happened. This is very important. It's gonna be helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Let me ask you a question. Um, did you explain to your lawyer, like you explained to me, how you grew up in an unstable home? Um, yeah, I did, and that's the reason why they're trying to build a background on me so they can present it to the judge so he can see my side because – I have had a hard life and stuff and have made some wrong decisions. And just like I admit, like, I wish I didn't search them and I didn't do the things that I did. At the end of the day, I had to search those women and I had to stand in front of the door or I was going to get my ass whipped. You know what I mean? It was like, it's right. either tip or tat. Either I'm getting shot in the back because I walked out that door or he's <laughs> one or the other. Right. So even though you had a drug problem, it seems like if you didn't do what he told you to do, he was gonna he was gonna hurt you pretty much. Right. Because at that time it seemed like he was mad, he was angry, and he wanted some get back on on the girls. And if you wouldn't have helped him, he probably would have flipped on you also. Exactly. All right. So um what do you, have you been doing since you've been incarcerated? Um, nothing now. I'm trying to go to, whenever I go to the feds, I'm going to go for cosmetology because I don't have enough time left here in the state. But once I go to the feds, I'm going to try to go for cosmetology and get my cosmetology license because since I have to sign up as a registered sex offender, I can't get a normal job. So I'm probably going to have to start up my own business or something. A sex offender? Why do they call you a sex offender? Because whenever I went to that rehab, I ran around the rehab, but I was naked, and there was underage women there and underage children. Oh, wow. And yeah, me running into a room, I got in, yeah, my rat said I could. I got indecent liberties and indecent exposure in sexual battery. Wow. What kind of uh, drug were you on that made you do that? They caught it all on camera. Uh, I was on Xanax and liquor. Wow. But you was hallucinating or something like that, huh? <laughs> I don't know what was going on in my mind, but all I know is that on camera it shows me running around the rehab and just make it like it shows me go to the bathroom and come out the bathroom go to the bathroom and dress and I came out the bathroom undressed and this was like at two o'clock in the morning and I'm just walking around the place but I think and I ended up going into a room with her mom and her kid and I climbed in the bed with the mom and the child and went to sleep and the mom woke me up and like the mom and the lady that worked at the facility woke me up and brought me back to my bed. When I woke up that morning, the police were there to arrest me because I touched the woman nakedly and since I climbed in the bed with her and her child naked, I got indecent exposure, sexual battery, and um, indecent liberties. Wow. That's a lot. So, so how did you feel when they told you that after yeah. you came down off that but they dropped off. When I woke up, I was like, are you serious? And then when they showed me the camera, I was like, I can't. What can I say? I'm sorry. Other than I apologize, like, because I didn't touch anybody sexually. I didn't do anything. But I was laying down on a woman and her kid. And wow. slept, <laughs> which is crazy to me. But that's, but like I said, it's my fault because I decided to get drunk and get fucked up that night. And what is that? What is that exactly? I heard. It what is? What does it do? What Xanax? It's like a sleeping pill, or it's like for anxiety. Okay. 
So you, 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 mix, you mix that up with alcohol. What kind of alcohol? Tequila, Patron. Mm. Wow. I know you was like, damn, what the hell did I just do? <laughs> right. I'm so pissed off at myself. You just don't even know. Wow. So they went from you being in, in a drug program to want to give you 17 years. Yeah, they went from me being in no, they went from me being in jail to them letting me go to a drug program instead of sitting in jail while I had to wait to court. They let me go to the drug program to go to court. From there, I got in trouble there with the state, and that's how um, I went to Moore County. So I was locked up in Cumberland County first, and then I got locked up in in Moore County after that mm. for two different charges. It seems like trouble keeps following you around, huh? Yeah, pretty much. And it makes me mad, but it's like I know that I'm never going to get in trouble again. Fun drugs. I'm glad that I'm sober now, though. I'm not going to How old are you now? I'm 27. Okay. So, I mean, God willing... You know, you get some of that time off you so you don't have to be in there a long time. But when you, if they do, and when you do come out, are you going to use drugs again or are you going to leave it alone? I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to try to start my own business. Yeah, because it seems like if you wasn't on drugs, you would have never had none of those problems, you know? Exactly. So uh, did your lawyer say maybe be a chance they can get you into another rehab? Because what it sound like to me, prison not going to change you, but the drug program might change you, though, you know? Right. But I have no clue, though, honestly. We'll see how that goes. I, I have no clue. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, but who? It's all about – I have no clue. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I have I no clue. <laughs> not, not I don't, yeah, I don't know. It all depends on what. The, oh, okay, it all it just depends on what the judge decides. Yeah. Um. But if you do get the time, hopefully not. I guess you can you can use it in a positive way and get some education and get some get learn some some trades and stuff like that. So when you do come out, you'll be able to get a job. You know. Right. Right. Has your family come to visit you since you've been in there? No, not really. My mom is dead. My father is really married, and my daughter is all the way in California. How old is your daughter? I talked to them on the phone, and that's just about it. She's five. Okay, she's with her dad? Yeah, that's the daughter's father. Okay. So you get do you, or you say you talk to her all the time? Yeah, I do. Okay. Or, or you can call. We have 60 seconds remaining. Oh, California. That's right. That's right. But I want to thank you um, for um, sharing your story yeah, with us. Yeah, she's in California. I want to thank you for sharing your story with us. And, thank um, you. If it was a good opportunity to let you tell your side of the story. Can you give me a follow-up call on Tuesday? Sure. What time? Give me a follow-up call like 3 p.m. If you can, 3 or 4 p.m. You have 30 seconds remaining. Talk to you on Tuesday. All right, 3 or 4 p.m. Have a good day and great talking to you. 